Okay, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to help you guys figure out how to calculate your total calorie intake for the day, okay? And then in a second video, I'm going to help you use that number to figure out your macronutrients, so your carbs, your proteins, and your fat intake based on the number that we calculate here. So I'm going to use a subject here who is female, 150 pounds, and moderately active. Okay. You obviously will do this for yourself. I'm going to do it alongside you, so grab your pen, your paper, probably a calculator. Depends on how good you are with numbers. I need my calculator. Okay, um, there's going to be some formulas and some percentages, so any of those things that you will need, I'll include in the text body of this post, um, but I will do everything else with you. So for really all of these formulas, it's going to require the body weight in kilograms. So that's the first thing that we're going to do is figure out the body weight in kilograms. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your body weight, my subjects is 150, and divide it by 2.2. That's going to give you uh, the kilogram body weight. I got 68.18, and I'm just going to round that uh, to 68 even. Okay, so what we're figuring out is called TDEE, Total Daily Energy Expenditure, okay? How many calories you expend on a daily basis. There's three components to this. There's the resting energy expenditure, which you may have heard referred to as the resting metabolic rate or the basal metabolic rate, which is how many calories your body needs to sustain itself with literally no physical activity, okay? This is how much your body needs to survive just laying in bed all day. That is resting energy expenditure. Then, of course, there is uh, physical activity. So that might be dedicated exercise. That might be if your job is active, any physical activity on top of uh, your resting energy expenditure. And then the thermic effect of food is a small number, uh, but it is it does contribute to your total calorie intake. The thermic effect of food is how many calories it requires to digest and process the food that you eat. So yes, eating food requires food. <laughs> All right, so we have our weight in kilograms. The first thing that we're going to figure out, excuse me, is that resting energy expenditure, R-E-E. -E. And there are two formulas. There's going to be a formula for male, a formula for females. I will include those both. They are very, very similar. Uh, my subject is female, so I'm going to use that female formula. And it is going to be the body weight in kilograms, 68, times 0.9 calories per day, times 24 hours in a day. Males doing this along with me, instead of 0.9, you are going to use 1. That is the difference in the formulas. Okay, so when we do this, 68 times 0.9 times 24, we get 1468.8. I am going to round that to 1469, and this is 1469 calories that my subject needs just to sustain. That is no physical activity included. So the next thing that we're going to figure out is physical activity. This is going to be... Um, from sedentary to exceptional, so we have light, moderate, heavy, and exceptional, and this is going to be a percentage of that resting energy expenditure that we just calculated, okay? So the subject here is moderately active, and you'll notice that gives me a percentage of 45 to 65%, which is kind of a big range. All of these are kind of big ranges, so you're going to have to decide for yourself, first of all, where are you on this scale, and then over here, are you on the light end or the high end of whatever you chose. Okay, so I'm just gonna give you kind of a benchmark for each of these. Sedentary is gonna be, does not exercise, and probably has a desk job, okay? So really no physical activity at all. Light is probably still gonna be a desk job, exercising one, maybe two times a week with fairly light exercise when, when exercising. Moderate, I'm going to say we're still working a desk job. Exercising more per week, three to four times maybe with a little bit higher intensity in those workouts. Then we get hard. This is where these last two is probably going to be where you're no longer working a desk job. Or if you are working a desk job, you're working out five to six days a week with pretty intense workouts. Um, this exceptional category, uh, you're probably an athlete of some kind. If not, um, you're working an active job. You're working out six to seven times a week. Pretty intense intense workouts when you do maybe twice a day. So that's just kind of to give you an idea as this goes down where you should be. And then of course you have to, like I said, decide if you're on the high end or the low end. So my subject, as we decided, or as I said, is moderately active. So I have to choose between 45 and 65% um, for her activity level. So let's say that she works a desk job and she works out 
four to five times a week um, with fairly intense activity. So I'm going to choose somewhere on the high end of moderately active, and I'm going to go with 60%. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to take 60% of my resting energy expenditure. So I'm going to take 1469, that number that we just figured out, and I'm going to multiply it by 0.6 for 60%. And I'm going to get 881.4. I'm going to round that to 881. That is our expenditure for activity level. So let's just, resting energy expenditure is here. 60% of that is right here. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add these two numbers together. Easy peasy. So 1469 plus 881, that gives me 2350. Okay. Now the very last piece, if you'll recall, is thermic effect of food. That is literally just going to be 10% of the resting energy expenditure plus the activity level. So that number that we just figured out, it's going to be 10% of that is my thermic effect of food. So I'm going to take 2350, multiply by 0.1, and that's going to give me, I probably didn't need a calculator for that, <laughs> 235 calories is my TEF. And then the very last step is to add the thermic effect of food, the resting energy expenditure, <clears throat> and the activity level. So we're going to add all three components together. So I'm going to do that since I already added the first two. I'm just going to add 2350 plus 235 for 2585. So that's 2,585 calories. For my female 150-pound moderately active subject, this is the total energy expenditure per day. So let's talk about goals here then. Um, if you want to lose weight, you need to be eating less than your total energy expenditure. If you want to gain weight, you need to be eating more. And if you want to maintain, you're going to stick right around this number, okay? The general benchmark for uh, deficits and surpluses is going to be 500 calories. So what that means is that if you want to lose weight, it's generally recommended that you eat 500 calories less than your energy expenditure to gain weight, 500 calories more than energy expenditure, okay? I think that 500 is a little bit much, especially if you're just starting. Um, I would suggest anywhere between 100 and 500 calories for a deficit or a surplus. And you can always, right, start a little low. And if you're not seeing the progress that you want, go a little higher. Go a little higher. Go a little higher. But you don't really want to go above or below 500 calories for a deficit or a surplus. I mean, a surplus is a, is a little less dangerous to play around with, but in that deficit, you don't really want to go less than 500, and I'm going to kind of talk about why. So um, my moderately active female subject, let's say she is going to go with a 500 calorie deficit. That's going to have her eating 2,085 calories per day to lose weight, okay? Now, I want to bring you back up to these numbers. So we have a resting energy expenditure of 1469, and then we had a thermic effect of food of 235, okay? I'm going to add those two together for you, 1469 plus 235. That's 1704, okay? Plus moderate activity level, okay? So 1704 is not even the total amount of energy that this person is expending. So when we do a 500 calorie deficit, we're not really allowing a whole lot of wiggle room for that physical activity. So yes, we do want to lose weight. We do want to expend more calories than we're consuming, but we don't want to get too extreme with that. This is why it's not recommended that you go below 500 calories for a deficit, okay? You don't want to get too close, especially to this number, for your total energy intake when you're losing weight because as we've discussed, this is what your body needs simply to function without any physical activity at all, okay? When you start eating less than this but you're still exercising, you're going to be altering your body's natural metabolic processes and we don't necessarily want that. We want to lose weight in a safe and a healthy way. So it, like I said, just don't go below 500 for that. That deficit. I also said that I recommend between 100 and 500 calorie deficits. For someone who is moderately active, who fits this uh, profile for my subject, I'm going to suggest something closer to 350 to a 400 calorie deficit. So let's go with, 
let's go with 350 because she can always go a little bit higher if she's not seeing the results that she wants. In a couple weeks, she can make that a 400 calorie deficit. But for now, let's go with a 300 calorie deficit. And all you're going to do is you're simply going to, from your total daily energy expenditure, subtract or add however many calories you want to be in a deficit or a surplus. Okay. And that is going to give us, what is that? I can't read backwards. 2585 minus 350. 22. So this number is the total calorie intake for this subject to lose weight. I bet a lot of you are looking at that thinking, oh my gosh, that's really high. Yeah. Well, a lot of people do under eat. It's one of the uh, biggest mistakes that I hear people making when they're trying to lose weight because it does make sense in your mind. If I want to lose weight, eat less, exercise more. And yes, to an extent that is true, but you still have to provide, excuse me, your body the fuel that it needs to function properly and effectively while exercising. Okay. You also don't want to lose muscle mass. Um, you want to try as best you can to lose that extra fat mass um, and so this number while it may seem high yeah that's right right numbers don't lie so for my female 150 pound moderately active subject to lose weight with a 350 calorie deficit she's gonna be eating 2235 calories that's a lot of food Sounds good, right? Okay, so on my next video, I'm going to take this number that we just figured out and teach you how to calculate your macronutrients, so your proteins, carbs, and fats.